Hey everybody, hope you're all doing well. My name is Steven and this is the Storytime channel. Today we have some I don't work here ladies stories and our first story of the day is by Allie Bluey, mistaken for a nurse while in urgent care. First of all, I love this subreddit. Secondly, I am someone who spent more time in the hospital this year than out of the hospital, which unfortunately is somewhat normal for me. Thirdly, I read a similar story yesterday which inspired me to finally post this. This is my first post so please be kind. Back to the story, I unfortunately had to spend 6 days in urgent care last week and they ultimately ended up putting me on an all-female ward as the hospital was overflowing with COVID patients and they didn't have any single bedrooms anymore. I completely understand and I really want to emphasize with everyone who is suffering from this and their families, it's an awful pandemic. They would normally never put me with other people, as I suffer from epileptic seizures and they try to not inflict medical trauma on patients who then have to witness this. I actually had an elderly lady moved from my ward as she kept saying I was possessed by the devil, which I feel really bad about still. I was in a room with a Karen, probably in her mid-40s or 50s, who was very rude and demanding to the nurses who had to keep up with her. I'm not sure why she was in, but she was walking around and talking on the phone quite a bit. Every single time a nurse walked past though, she would start screaming in agony, demanding water, a yogurt or something else. She also pressed the emergency button on her bedside multiple times and then yelled at the nurse that she was taking way too long when all she wanted was a tea or something. The worst part was that she kept staring at me and talked about me on the phone to her other Karen friend saying that young people can't even be ill, blah. So one morning, as she kept hitting that emergency button moaning around, I got concerned that something actually was wrong with her, so I just asked if she was okay. She then told me to get up and cover her feet with a blanket as she was cold. I was very, very dizzy at the time, but she made me feel uncomfortable, so I actually did. I then went back to bed and almost fainted. After that, she kept asking me for help, get her some water, help her get up, etc. And I ended up telling her that I'm not a nurse. She then proceeded to yell at me, calling me all sorts of names, saying I was faking an illness and that I'm a little brat for not helping her and deserve to be punished for this. The nurses told her off for that quite badly and she ended up being moved. Either way, that was my Karen, who insisted that other patients play nurse for her story. If you were OP in the situation, would you want to call out this Karen and try and put her in her place? Or would you be the kind of person to lay low and just ride out your experience having to be bunked up with this person? Let me know in the comments down below. Our next story is by Sergi Brin, scaring off an entitled witch. First off, I have a terminal illness, so I'm dying. No commiserations, please. Because of that, I decided not to suffer fools and idiots a while back, probably because I'm very angry about it. I would like to point out, I haven't had a fight in over 26 years. So I'm in Bunnings, an example that is an Australian hardware chain, think Walmart but only for hardware and gardening. I was looking for what I wanted and a woman, with her husband, demanded, it was the tone of her voice, where those brass hose fittings were. Without turning around, I said I didn't know. She put her hand on my shoulder and tried to turn me around. I'm over 6 foot and around 15 stone and big with it, so good on her for balls. So I turned around and she got up into my face and shouted things at me. If we both didn't have masks on, spittle would have been flying into my face. I said freak off out of my face you cobweb runt or I will take both of your freaking eyes out. She literally ran backwards out of the aisle with her husband trying to keep her upright. I don't know what they did, but I walked to an exit, got back to my car, and went home. Well, at the very least, OP gave them a mighty scare. Maybe they will guess again before they go touching somebody that's obviously way bigger than them. Maybe their mental I'm a Karen, you can't touch me shield was shattered that day. Who knows, but for other people's sake, let's hope so. This next story is by Chick 70 not my concern. This was about two years ago, so prior to the pandemic. I was on a work trip and staying in a hotel that seemed to be 80% business travelers. I take my own mug with me when I travel, 
several reasons, the primary being that I don't like drinking from styrofoam, and I'd finished breakfast and was rinsing it in the sink in the breakfast area. I was wearing a jewel-toned wrap dress and heels. The breakfast staff wear black pants and dark polo shirts with aprons over. I turned around and an older man barked at me, you're out of forks. It wasn't what he said, but how he said it. He managed to get a lot of condescension into those four words. My first thought was, who do you think you're talking to? Followed by, who talks to hotel staff like that? I saw white. I looked at him and said, lovely, not my concern, and walked off. In my peripheral vision, I could see someone with him leaning in to whisper, likely telling him I didn't work there. I stopped at the front desk and mentioned it to them because I didn't want him complaining about the rude and unhelpful breakfast staff. It's like dealing with a five-year-old but in a grown-up's body. In fact, that's probably how it happened. A five-year-old with bad manners never got those manners curbed and there we are. Our next story is by Wide Willy 1369 Wally World. This happened about five years ago. I was working part-time at an Ace Hardware. I had semi-retired the year before, so I just wanted to work part-time to keep busy. I had got off work and headed towards the local Walmart, where my wife was working to pick her up after she had finished work. I had gone into the store to pick up a few things instead of just waiting in the car. I was wearing khakis and a light blue polo with a big Ace logo on the left chest side, also wearing black shoes. Being that I was the paint specialist, I wore a different colored polo instead of the usual red one worn by Ace employees. As I was going by the hardware area, headed towards the auto area, I heard Ace is the place, which when I looked over, came from, we will call him Joe, a Wally World employee who was behind the paint desk. I knew Joe, we met a few times when I was shopping with my wife, so we know each other. Joe was trying to help a customer of his but was having some trouble. Joe had worked in the hardware department area for around 6 months and was a real good kid who wanted to learn, and I have worked in the paint, home improvement, hardware, etc. fields for 38 years. Joe asked me politely if I could help. The customer asked his questions, I gave answers, as well as helpful hints on how to do his project. The customer got what he needed and thanked me and Joe and went on his way. Joe thanked me and asked if the wife was getting off soon, which I replied in about 10 minutes. We chatted for a few minutes and then I went over to Auto to get the wipers I needed. Walmart has that little computer thing where you punch in all the information, make, model, etc. and it will tell you what you need. I found one 21 inch wiper and was digging through the mess looking for another when I hear the dreaded, excuse me. I turned to look and found standing next to me, the typical Karen. The Karen hairstyle, huge sunglasses, she was in her 40s, dressed way too nice to be shopping in a Walmart, and with enough gold chains to make Mr. T jealous. You took your sweet time in helping that customer in paints, so now you will help me. I need wipers for my BMW. Me trying to be nice, if you don't know how to use the computer here, I can show you. No, you will get them for me. That's why you work in the stump, so you do your job. I don't work here, lady. Yes, you do. You were helping the men in paints and you're wearing the uniform. Me pointing to my chest pocket. Does this say Ace Hardware or Walmart? Karen ignoring my pointing. You will get me what I want or I will get your manager and get you fired. At that point, I had enough of her crap. I grabbed my second wiper and turned and started to walk away. She then started to scream. Where the freak do you think you're going? Get back here. Where is your manager? I'm going to get you fired. A few seconds after the word fired came out of her volcano lips, I felt a hand grab my left shoulder and dagger like nails dig into my skin in my upper chest area. Note. Back in 2001, I was diagnosed with sarcoma cancer, which was in my upper left chest area. They removed all of the cancer, muscle, whatever padding I had, and all that was left was a thin layer of skin. Her nails pierced the skin. I yelped. I grabbed her wrist with my right hand, squeezed her wrist hard and yanked her hand off of me, and as I turned to face her, pushed her away from me. She stumbled backwards and fell against the counter and then on her butt. She is sitting on the floor screaming that I attacked her. At this time, Joe came around the aisle. I yelled at Joe to get a manager and security. I then opened my polo and put my right hand in to check as my chest hurt. Yep, I was bleeding. She had torn the skin. 
I grabbed some tissues to put in place. At that time, the customer service manager and Walmart security came running over. The CSM says, what in the heck is going on here? Your employee attacked me. Karen was helped to her feet by the CSM and Walmart security. The CSM says, which employee? Him? Pointing at Joe. No, him. Pointing at me. The CSM says, he doesn't work here. He works for Ace Hardware as per his shirt. I want him fired. I want him arrested. I am going to sue. In the meantime, the Walmart security came over and was talking to me. I told him what happened and that I think they should call the cops. He also called the EMTs as the tissue I was using was now blood soaked. Karen is still screaming. I want him fired. I want him arrested. He assaulted me. He tried to R word me. She just kept going on and on. She was yelling down the aisle at me as well as the security guy and one of the managers. The Walmart security told Joe to get me a chair as well as a bunch of towels and also try to get a hold of my wife as well. After about 10 minutes, cop one and cop two came in. Cop 1 went to talk with Karen, who kept adding more crimes against her. Seems not only I beat her up, then tried to R-word her, and then steal her purse. Cop 2 came to talk to me. By this time, the EMTs and my wife were with me. My shirt was off, and my upper chest was bloody, and trails ran down my stomach, and were starting to stain my khakis. Customer service manager and Walmart security were with Karen. The EMTs and my wife were with me. The cops were in the middle of the aisle talking. Cop 1 called over Walmart security and asked to see the security footage. The two went off. Karen got real quiet when security cameras were mentioned. After about 10 minutes, the EMTs are finishing up and wanted to take me to the hospital, which I declined. Cop 1 and Walmart security came back and came over to me. The look on Karen's face with that smile like she won. They both turned and headed towards Karen, and when the one cop pulled out his cuffs, she screamed, Arrest him, not me! and threw her purse at cop 1 and hit him in his face and turned and started to run. But cop 2 did a flying tackle and took her to the floor and had her cuffed in under a minute. She was charged with assault, giving false police report, assaulting a police officer, resisting arrest, etc, etc. I myself had to have my arm in a sling for several weeks so that it would heal. I had to wear this gooey covered gauze while it did. The amount of times where I've heard this kind of circumstance where somebody's just being a good Samaritan and helping somebody out and that's the reason why these Karens assume they work there is incredibly disappointing. Let alone the fact that all these Karens seem so willing to grab onto people and dig their claws into them. Thankfully, this Karen got everything they deserved. Our next story is by Rios91. Not sure if it's a coincidence or whether my eyes have just been opened. So yesterday, I went and binge read through easily over 50 of the top ever I don't work here lady posts. Then today, while I'm at a small electronic store in a mall, I had my very first encounter. The moment by itself wasn't anything special. Another customer walked in, mistook me for an employee, and asked me what kind of electric kettles we sell. The mix-up was completely understandable, seeing as I was literally the only person in the store at that time and easily resolved with me informing them that I was a customer myself and that the sales staff had just run out around the corner to the store's kiosk by the mall's main elevator. But the scenario in itself left me contemplating whether this was actually the first time this ever happened to me or whether I've just become more aware of it of notion after having spent hours reading more memorable stories. Maybe it's just me, or maybe some of you have had similar awakenings. Food for thought. There's actually something tangently related to something like this. It's called the Bader meinhof phenomenon, where you learn a new word or you learn what a word means, and all of a sudden you can't stop seeing that word pop up everywhere. Just like how you learn a new word and you see it in commercials or TV shows or you see it online all of a sudden in frequencies you never noticed before, it's likely becoming more hyper aware about these I don't work here stories led to you having a phenomenon like the Bader meinhof phenomenon when this person mistook you. And our final story of the day is by Ghostly Aussie. Sorry ma'am, I don't work for the state. Alright, so a bit of background. I live in New York and it's been snowing like crazy over here. The state recently started hiring people to shovel the snow out of the way. I live with my parents. Their house has cameras installed. This is important for later. My dad asked me if I wanted to go help him clean off the car and the driveway. I accepted. 
We go outside and clean for a good 5-10 to 10 minutes. Nothing bad so far. Just a dad and his son cleaning the driveway. Nothing bad, right? Well, apparently some lady was just staring at us. I looked over at her. I'm a bit antisocial, but I got the courage to ask what was wrong. Mistake number one. Conversation goes as follows. I say, excuse me, but do you need anything? Her, let's call her RW, rude woman for short. Yes, in fact, I do. I saw you were helping this gentleman here and I want you to shovel my driveway as well. I chuckled. Pardon? You heard me. I know the state pays college kids like you. It's just some snow. You'll get it done in no time. I look over at my dad. We both started laughing. Truth is, I'm not even in college. I never went to college. Sure, I'm 23, but come on, lady. I say, ma'am, I'm sorry, but I don't work for the state. This is my dad. I'm just helping him. She looked at me like I was speaking Latin or something. She waves her hand. Come over here and do your darn job. I know you get paid per hour, so come over here and clean out my driveway. I ignore her and keep shoveling. My dad needed to get something, so he went inside. Rude woman took the steward advantage and grabbed my arm. Physically pulled me away. You're all done with him. Come, I need to show you where you have to shovel. I push her away. Lady, I already told you, I don't work for the state. Rude woman starts freaking out, yelling about how she's going to call the police because I pushed her. I told her to call them and that I'll gladly show them the footage. She looked at me confused. I pointed at the cameras. Her face went from red to ghost white quickly. She walked away. Not even an apology or anything. My dad came back and I told him what happened. We had a laugh. So to that lady, sorry, I don't work for the state. Some people are just way too dense for their own good, to the point that sometimes you're even like, dang, how do they even make it that far in life? The person clearly said that that's their dad and they're helping them. Why would they lie about that? If they're getting paid per hour, they would be happy to stop and help you. Just such a weirdly incompetent thing to think. Unless it was all one huge thousand IQ play to try and get the kid to awkwardly shovel her driveway out of confusion or something, which obviously didn't work. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today, so if you have a favorite story of the day, let me know which story and why in the comments down below. But besides that, if you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like, and if you haven't, subscribe and turn notifications on so you'll never miss an upcoming video. No matter what you do, whether it's just viewing the video, liking, subscribing, turning notifications on, I appreciate the heck out of it. Every little thing that you do helps the channel grow that much more and I can't thank you enough for it. So, until next time, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll be right here next time on the Storytime channel.